Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, I hope that you are all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are out there in the world. So do you guys remember this video that I posted back in September of 2021? It was mainly focusing on this $1.4 billion settlement from the SEC. That's what they were looking for back in 2021. Everyone was always questioning, why didn't a settlement happen? Well, first off, Brad and Chris got the opportunity to settle with the SEC. But instead, they fought the SEC. And then in September of 2021, we got this update, which showed us that the SEC won it 1.4 billion dollars why am i bringing this up though this is 2021 well it's because now just recently Stuart Adorati, the clo at ripple put out a post talking about how the judge or sorry the sec is asking the judge for two billion dollars in fines and penalties guys this is ridiculous now, I saw a lot of you asking me, like, what I think about this. What, what is my thought process on the fact that the SEC wants $2 billion? Well, in my opinion, we can't let all of this cloud our judgment. The other day, I just made a video talking about how a lot of what we are seeing from the SEC is nonsense. And it's just to kind of pull attention away from the bigger picture here. Obviously, these responses and things happening around the SEC case, definitely it definitely does matter. But they're not getting $2 billion. This is an absurd amount of money for what Ripple and XRP... Like, this entire case is just ridiculous. I mean, we've talked about it almost daily for the last couple years now. We know how ridiculous the SEC's argument is. We know how ridiculous this case is. I think that this whole idea of $2 billion in fines and penalties, the judge is going to laugh at that. And if he doesn't, then I would be surprised. But we have down here that our response will be filed next month. But as we all have seen time and time again, this is a regulator that trades in statements that are false, mischaracterized, and designed to mislead. They stay true to form here. Rather than faithfully apply the law, the SEC remains bent on wanting to punish and intimidate Ripple and the industry at large. We trust the court will approach the remedies phase fairly. And I completely agree. I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous if I'm being completely honest with you guys. But we also got a statement from Brad Garlinghouse. He said Gensler's SEC has repeatedly acted outside the law, not going unnoticed by judges, admonishing the agency for a gross abuse of the power entrusted to it by Congress, Box case, and for acting without faithful allegiance to the law, Ripple case. Let's not forget... Gensler's lack of attention to SBF fraud, and we also have the SEC plans to ask the judge for $2 billion in a case that involved no allegations, let alone findings of fraud or recklessness. There's absolutely no precedent for this. We will continue to expose the SEC for what they are when we respond to this. So next week, definitely uh, stay focused because, or sorry, next month, uh, stay focused because that's when their response will be filed from uh, Ripple side. Now, Mr. Huber makes a great point over here. He's saying, what did I tell you? Absolutely ridiculous. I mean, the SEC Gov didn't even ask JP Morgan to pay half of this for proven fraud, corruption, bribery, and market manipulation. And here you guys have it, right? This goes back to 2016. They paid $264 million to settle F FCPA charges. Again, you can see the blatant highlights of fraud here from the largest bank in America. We also have over here JP Morgan Securities admits to manipulative uh, trading in U.S. Treasuries. This was 2020. Again, look at the payments here. $10 million and a civil penalty of 20 25 million so a total of 35 million dollars we could also see that 
If we scroll down there, the U.S. Department of Justice and the U.S. Uh, Comedy Futures Trading Commission today announced parallel actions against J.P. Morgan Chase and Co. and certain of its affiliates for engaging in manipulative trading in the precious metals and U.S. Treasuries futures and cash markets, a total of more than $920 million, including amounts for a criminal restitution uh, forfeiture and also disgorgement penalties and fines is to be paid across the three actions. So we're talking about manipulating Entire markets, treasury markets, precious metals, cash markets. Guys, imagine how much damage this was doing to the retail sector. I mean, the, the people are trading these markets with their hard-earned money. And here you have manipulation by the largest bank in the U.S. And they're only paying, you know, these small fines. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Also over here, J.P. Morgan admits to widespread record-keeping failures and agrees to pay $125 million penalty to resolve SEC charges. Give me a break. Look at, I mean, this is in like a three-year, like some of this is like in a three-year time frame. Like this goes back to 2016. This is 2020. This is 2021. Over here, we also have 2018. I mean, come on, man. This is the largest bank in the U.S. J.P. Morgan to pay more than $135 million for improper handling of ADRs as well. Like... And, and and they want to try to come to you know come for crypto and say crypto's a scam, that you know we're we're only utilizing crypto for this and that. I mean, come on, it's hypocritical at this point. But we also have over here, right, guys. They had to pay some, right? Like look at this. Since 2021, the SEC has hit dozens of firms, including big banks such as J.P. Morgan Chase and Co. and Wells Fargo and Co. with fines of 1.7 billion over such compliance failures. The problem here is, is read more into some of these fees, right? Like you look at these as fines. What really are these? Are these payoffs? Are these bribes? Like what's really going on here? Because let's be real. The amount that should be fined to some of these names, like J.P. Morgan, for an example, it should be tens of billions, possibly even hundreds of billions of dollars. Over here, we have an update, right? So this is 11 Wall Street firms with widespread record-keeping failures. This goes back to 2023, August, by the way, 289 million. These are firms that admit to wrongdoing and agree to pay penalties. Look at this, Wells Fargo... Again, 125 million. BNP Paribas, 35 million. BML Capital Markets Corp, 25 million. I mean, these are large names, guys. It's insane to me that these types of things, these large names, are paying small portions like this. Yet, here's Ripple, a US based private company getting charged a $2 billion fine. Now, when we go over here to the 15 biggest compliance fines, 1 billion and above, look at this. This got updated on um, November 30th of last year. So at the top here, we have Binance for 4.3 billion. Now it's not in order of the largest amounts, it's the most recent ones. You can see at the bottom that there has been big fines brought on to Bank of America and JP Morgan and things like that in the past. But remember, like these are very, very long ago fines. Like if we actually scroll down to the bottom, right? This is around 2013, 2014. And this is all around abusing um, loan services and foreclosures. This was the big banks screwing over the retail sector like they always have and just paying a small fine. Like, listen, when we look at these big banks, 30.6 billion, guys, I'm telling you right now, that's nothing for these big banks. They are taking in so much money. JP Morgan paid $13 billion back in uh, 2008, but it was mainly in 2013 when it actually settled out for $13 billion. But this is all from 2008. It just didn't catch up to them until 2013. Up here we have BNP Paribas. This is money laundering. Oh, wait. Hold on. This is a big bank. Money laundering? No, that can't be. I wonder if they were using Bitcoin. Oh, wait. No, it actually wasn't. It was through... Oh, yeah, that's right. The U.S. financial system. <laughs> On behalf of sanctioned nations. Wait, why weren't they using Bitcoin for this? 
Somebody call up Elizabeth Warren. I think that she might have to go and do her research and, and, and figure out that BNP Paribas was actually us, using Bitcoin at that time. It's ridiculous. Like, these banks are constantly being let go now. Like, there used to be major fines for their actions. Like, these are all old actions. No recent actions were in the billions for these big banks. When are we going to have any accountability for what the SEC is trying to do? There's no reason why Binance should be getting charged $4.3 billion in an industry that's only worth almost, it's almost worth now $3 trillion, but at the time, it was worth $1.2 trillion or something like that. Think about how ridiculous that is. And now a company like Ripple getting charged $2 billion with no allegations against them. Now, I put out a post regarding this as well. I said, not to mention that the SEC caused $15 billion in damages themselves to the retail sector. Upon the announcement of the XRP lawsuit, the SEC has caused enough damage two years ago. They were demanding $1.4 billion, and now it's $2 billion. How ridiculous. They don't deserve a dime, and they don't. Listen, this whole idea that they want $2 billion, this is just so that... You know, they, they don't feel bad, specifically Gary Gensler. He doesn't feel bad for losing the idea around XRP being a security, which he did lose back in the summer. But also, we have from uh, Edward Farina, the SEC is asking for $2 billion in fines from Ripple. But in reality, it should be the other way around. They should pay $20 billion to XRP holders for the financial losses caused by the lawsuit. But honestly... It should be well worth, you know, $200 billion paid out. Because think about the damages that the SEC caused for the last couple of years around XRP and XRP holders. We completely missed the 2021 bull run, thanks to the SEC. Imagine how much the damages actually are. We don't even know. We just know that upon the announcement of the lawsuit, $15 billion were caused in damages on just day one. But what do we actually have to say about all of this? What is really going on with all of this? 801 underscore XRP said, it's all a show, a drama, and everyone's eating it up. They're killing time till regulations kick in and then boom, no harm, no foul. No one committed any crimes, etc. Regulatory forbearance is when there exists a time inconsistency between setting successful and appropriate regulatory action, just like Gary said. And just like in my recent video, I talked about this heavily. I really do think that they're waiting for the perfect moment. And everyone's always asking me, like, what is that perfect moment? It's for regulation, standardization, everything to be put in place. That way, the only next thing is go live. Now, you might call me crazy for thinking this, but I do think that this is all a show. I think that everyone's in on it, too. I think that Ripple has been playing the role that they have to play. I believe that Ripple will be chosen. I think that they have been chosen. You can't look at all those connections that Ripple has and say, there's no way. But also, remember, right? When we really look at Ripple as well, and you look at all those connections, and you look at the regulatory bodies that they've been working with, Gary Gensler is also on the board of directors with the FSB. At the end of the day, I don't think that any of this matters. And I've talked about it. I've talked about it on multiple occasions now. And I will continue to say it. This has all been by plan. And it's shaken out a lot of people. And that's the number one goal of a lot of these major events. So with that being said, to really kind of summarize things, I'm not too concerned about this $2 billion fine. I saw a lot of people harping on it. Oh, that's it. XRP's dead. Ripple's killed. It's all nonsense. It's all ridiculous. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys have more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.